As you know by now, chapter five is all about functions and also working with parameters and arguments. So we're gonna take another look at functions today for our video lecture. We're gonna remember what the, the parts are by labeling them. We're also gonna work through just like the computer would. So if we have functions like this and we have arguments and parameters and function calls, actually just what's going on. So we're gonna do some hand tracing. So we've got these eight parts that we're gonna label first. So function name. So here I've got a function and it's called mystery. The header is the whole first statement right here, the whole first line ended by a colon. And the function body is the indented part. Over here, this part is not in a function at all. Okay, so these are just the main program right here. So you wouldn't label it. Um, what type of function is this? It's got a return statement. So I have a return function here. If I have a return function, I'm going to look for a return function call. The name is mystery. I'm going to look for mystery right here. So this right here on this line, part of an assignment statement is my return function call. I've got a result as a local variable right here. I've got X and Y as parameters. You look over here and you might think you, not have, you don't have arguments, but really whenever I have my function call and I've got something inside the parentheses, these are my arguments. They just happen to be literals instead of variables, but the two and the three are my arguments. So let's hand trace what's happening here. I've got a function definition, so the computer is going to ignore all of this until it's actually called. And the first thing that happens is this result assignment statement. And result calls mystery function. And it's going to pass in from as its arguments two and three. And the two the value of two is going to go into the first parameter, which is X. And the value three is going to go into the second parameter, which is Y. So if I'm doing a little trace table over here, I'm going to set up an X and a Y. And the first value of X is two. And the first value of Y is three. Now the next statement is result equals, and I have an assignment statement here. And it says X plus Y. X is two and Y is three. I'm just going to put those values there and then divided by y minus x, and y is 3, and x is 2. So I'm going to do my parentheses first. I've got x plus y is 5, and here I've got 3 minus 2 is 1. So I've got 5 divided by 1. This is integer division, so 5 divided by 1 is just 5. So I've also got in my little trace table, I've got result, which is 5. Now it's going to return result. So remember, the value, it's not actually returning the vari variable, it's returning the value, which is 5. 5 is going to come right back into here. Result equals the value of this function call, which is 5. Now, this function is finished. It's no longer getting called. So these variables are removed. All that I have left is the value, which gets placed into this assignment statement. And down here, I've got result, which is a different one. And this result is 5. And so what's going to happen here is on my screen, I would print result, which is 5. Let's take a look at another one. I'm here I've got another mystery function. I've got a main function, and I've got a function call over here. So if we were playing, so let's label the parts first. Do I have a function name? I've got mystery, and I've got main. Do I have a function header? I've got this statement right here and this one right here. And the function body, I've got right here, and I've got right here. What type of function is this? It's got a return, so this is a return function. What type is this? No return, so this one's a void. So I need to look for one return function call and one void function call. Here's my void function call, and here, so remember mystery is my return function, and here's my return function call. Okay, so for parameters, I've got X and Y. And for arguments, I've got this X and Y. We've labeled the parts. Now let's go ahead and play computer. So I've, when it comes to a function definition, the computer ignores it until it's called. So all these get skipped. All this gets skipped. It's going to come right down here to main. So here's my first function call, main. Now it's going to come up here and it's going to execute the steps. There's no parameters or anything, so I'm just going to go right into it. Here I have a local variable X and I have a local variable y. x starts out at 5 and y starts out at 7. Now I come to a print statement. This is part of this. This is a statement and here's my function called mystery. 
and it's going to pass in as for its argument is the value of x which is 5 and the value of y which is 7 so it's not actually going to pass in this x and this y it's going to pass in the value it's going to go into this parameter and that was going to go into this parameter so 5 gets passed here and 7 gets passed there so now I'm in this function call this has its own x which is 5 its own y which is 7 and it's going to have another local variable called z and z is going to be x plus y we know that x is 5 and y is 7 so z is 12 that's the first statement right here now z is going to be z divided by 2.0 z is 12 I'm just going to write a little 12 right there 12 divided by 2.0 is 6.0 so my new value of z is 6.0 now we hit a return statement. The value of z, it's not really going to pass z, just the value. The value of z is 6.0, so that comes right back down to here where the function call was. When this function is finished, these variables are removed. So it's going to print the value of this function call, which is 6.0. Hey, let's try one more. This one I put a little twist in it because I wanted to put in a for loop. We were just starting those off in chapter four, so we want to kind of go back and make sure we're reviewing for loops and doing trace tables. Let's label our parts. Here I've got a function name and a function name. I've got the header and I've got the body. Okay. What type of function is this? It's got a return, so I've got my return function here and my void function here. I have my void function call, and remember mystery is my return function, and here's my return function call. I've got a local variable x, and I've got a local variable x right here. I've got some a parameter, and I've got an argument. Okay, so let's kind of do our tracing. The computer's going to ignore all of this until it's called, and it's going to ignore this function until it's called. It's going to start right here with main, a void function call. It's going to come into the main function, and we're going to start with the local variable x, and its value is 4. Now the next statement is a print statement, and it's going to call mystery, and it does have an argument here with x plus 1. So what's kind of going on? Is it going to pass 4? Is it going to pass 1? Well, it's going to do the math. So it's going to take the value of x, which is 4, add 1 to it. It's going to do all this. You would get 5. So the value, the argument is 5, and that's going to get passed in to this parameter, m. So I have the function call. I'm going to come up here to this function. I have a parameter, m, and its value is going to be 5. So even though x is 4 down here, 5 gets passed in, and the value of this parameter is 5. Now I've also got a local variable, x which is different from this one. This one's local here, this one's local here. So kind of like from that video lecture that you guys didn't like with the different islands, we've got different variables going on. So this x is the counter for my for loop and its first value is going to be three. Now I'm inside the loop and m is going to take its value, which is five, and add x to it, okay? So five plus x, I mean m plus x, five plus three, I get eight. So the new value of m is 8. I'm going to come back into my loop again, and x is going to become 4. Inside my loop, I have m plus x, so 8 plus 4, and my new value of m is 12. I'm going to repeat my loop. x is going to become 5. m is m plus x, so 12 plus 5 is 17. And I go to my loop one more time. I'm going to go to 6. And m is going to be m plus x, so 17 plus 6 and I'm going to get 23. Now, do, do I increment x again? No, remember, it's not going to get to the upper value, so it's just going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. So my loop ends, okay, and I've got to my return. So what am I going to return? Not actual m, but the value of m, which is 23. And this is going to come right back to the function call. Now that this function is over, these variables are removed. This is all I have left right now. And it's going to print the value of this function call, which is 
Okay, and then when this function is finished, it's printed, this variable gets removed and we're done. So when you come to class on Friday, you're going to get some of these to practice in small teams and you're going to get your own chance to label the parts and to do some hand tracing. So watch this video again if you need to just kind of practice it. I've included these in the website so you can see what the examples are in case you want to try them on your own. Otherwise, you'll be doing it in class.